morning! Welcome to the Wild Gut Project. My name is Carrie. This is all about being vegan on the low FODMAP diet for irritable bowel syndrome. And today I'm filming a, a what I eat in a day video, kind of being low FODMAP and vegan. Um, I've already had a cup of tea with some oat milk, which I forgot to film. Um, but now I'm going to be making some breakfast and a packed lunch. Um, and to be honest, I don't actually have a lot of time today, so I'm not really sure why I've chosen to film. But I thought it might be useful to show a day where I don't I don't cook very much, or like you know, um, it's it's quick and I've prepped things and it's it's good for a busy day. So yeah, let's get on with breakfast. So for breakfast, I peeled an orange and just sliced it up, luckily it didn't have any seeds. And then I put about half a cup of oats into a bowl and sprinkled on some cinnamon, you can never have too much. Mixed it about and then added in one third of the banana, finely sliced. And then I added in a splash of oat milk. I would probably use almond if you're on the elimination phase. And then I've got some very simple chia pudding which is just plant milk, vanilla extract, and um, maple syrup, which would be left overnight with chia seeds. And then I put some cocoa, uh, coconut yogurt there, and then I was gonna add in that orange, and that's my breakfast. Very simple. And it looks pretty now, and I'm just going to mix it all up and turn it into a sort of bircher kind of breakfast thing. And then while I remember, because I was having bananas, while they're still a bit green at the edges, I like to break them up into thirds, pop them in a box and pop them in the freezer just so they don't get any more ripe and higher in FODMAP. And then for my packed lunch I've got two slices of frozen sourdough bread and I've got some of the chickpea mayo kind of tuna mayo alternative um, which I made a recipe video for, video for before so I'll link that and I'm just going to spoon some onto the bread and because the bread is frozen it will keep nice and cool and then I'm slicing up a cucumber on the side and then I'm going to add in a tomato as well. I don't want the bread to get soggy, so I'm not putting the tomato in the bread, if that makes sense. And that's my packed lunch sorted. Plus some water, obviously. So I've had a small change of plans, and I've ended up getting home much sooner than I thought, so I'm just going to have my packed lunch in the garden. Um, and then I'm going to be going to meet some friends to do a workout in the park, because it's a nice day. Um, and I don't really want to film them, because I don't think they want to be on YouTube. Um, but when I come back, I'm definitely going to make some kind of protein shake or smoothie, so I will cut to that recipe now. So it turned out to be a strawberry milkshake, because my housemate had some strawberries that needed throwing away, but I thought I'd try and save what I could. And then I'm topping it up with some frozen strawberries. Then I'm adding in some oat milk, and again, I like oat milk, and it's much better for the environment, so I'm using that. But if I was in the elimination phase, I would use almond milk. And then I'm adding in one third of banana, frozen from earlier, and then one tablespoon of pea protein powder, some more of that coconut yogurt. And then I'm going to add in a bit of vanilla extract, just give it some extra flavor. And I'm adding some hot water because I'm too impatient to wait for the fruit to defrost. And because I've got some ice on the side as well, it'll be all right. And then I'm gonna blend that together you could add more sugar if you think the fruit isn't sweet enough, but these are actually okay, probably because the strawberries were overripe. And then that's a beautiful, pretty pink smoothie with lots of protein, ready for consumption after a workout. Cheers. It's a bit later on now. Earlier I had some peanuts and satsumas, and um, I guess now it's time to make dinner. I don't really have anything planned, it's kind of a matter of looking in the fridge and seeing what I need to use up, so let's do that. So I've got some tofu and some ginger, some kale, some broccoli, um, a carrot that looks a little bit sad so needs using soon, some tomato, some pak choy that needs using, I've got some black rice and some tomato which has been in some balsamic um, vinegar and basil. So I'm thinking stir fry. I decided to make the tofu a bit fancy, so I'm first chopping it up into little cubes or pieces and then laying them out on a plate, preferably so they're not touching, and popping them in the microwave just for a couple of minutes. 
And then meanwhile, I'm going to prep some vegetables. So I'm just peeling a carrot into shreds and then I'm using 90 grams of broccoli. And I was using my meal maker guide there to check how much, just because this is one of the portions you have to limit. And then I'm going to cut it into really small pieces just so it cooks quickly in the wok. And then those tofu pieces should be quite firm and almost, not dry, but um, a little bit rubbery almost now. Um, and then I'm going to put some gluten-free flour in a bowl and you could definitely use corn flour and that would actually be better, I just didn't have any. And then I've sprinkled in some Chinese five spice and then I'm going to coat those tofu pieces in the flour. Then I'm going to heat a bit of oil, I've used ground nut oil, and I'm going to fry those pieces until they're really nice and golden and crispy. Just take those out just so they don't cook anymore and there you go. Set them aside and then the same pan I'm just going to lightly fry some chopped ginger and then I'm going to snip in some of the greens of a spring onion to kind of substitute garlic and then I'm adding in those vegetables I prepped earlier. I'm also adding in a nice big handful of kale which is free from FODMAP very healthy and then I'm pouring in a bit of the water from the black rice which is why it looks so dark I'm stirring it about and then I noticed my housemate had left an almost finished jar of passata so I put some water in it with their permission um, just to use it up and add a bit more flavor and I'm adding in the rest of those tomatoes some sesame seed oil and of course some soy sauce stirring it around kind of making a gravy I'm adding in some sesame seeds, just a bit more flavour nutrition, and some asafoetida. And then this stuff from Sainsbury's it has other things in it, so you can use quite a bit. And then I'm using that flour from earlier to thicken up the sauce, make a nice thick Chinese stir fry. The portion of black rice I had was quite small, so I'm also cooking some rice noodles to add into the meal, just so it's more hearty. And then I'm serving it all up, so lots of vegetables, black rice, rice noodles, and then that lovely crispy tofu. So, oh, and extra pumpkin seeds, because why not? And that turns into a nice, big, hearty kind of Chinese meal. Um, yeah, very filling, very nutritious, very tasty. So I'm gonna go eat that stir fry. I've tasted it, it worked out pretty well considering I made it up on the spot. So, you know, it's always worth experimenting with leftovers. Um, I'm sorry today has ended up being a bit disorganised. It didn't really go the way I planned, but I'm hoping at least you got some useful recipes that are low FODMAP and vegan. And if you would like more, I make videos every Sunday, so please subscribe. Um, but yeah, I will see you then if you do. So, bye. Heads up, next Sunday, there may or may not be a vegan low FODMAP pizza recipe. Ooh.